Ladies and gentlemen, it's performance time with the new Audi RS7, the top sporty version of the A7 lineup. And here with Thomas, we're going through all the details in exterior, interior, and the performance driving experience of maybe one of the most beautiful Audis there is. Or oh, what's your take on that? Navara Blue is the color for today. And I would say join us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Also a base Audi A7 in this new generation has the strong front grille in this very form and also a strong hood, very elegant already in the front but sporty and here the RS7 has these quattro citations from the past model then the shiny or glossy black grille and the contrasting bigger lower bumper also this bigger air intake, this is a real air intake by the way. It starts here also with a contrasting color to this Navara blue. You could also get a black or night package that then also puts it all in black. Then the headlamps start with LED. Optionally, you directly go to the laser lights as we have them right here. Nice structure also on the inside. So a real menacing look here for the RS7. And they also have a dark background. You can see it right here. So all in the front. Very strong, but yet still elegant. Wow, wow, wow. I could stay out of the picture for ages and it would not get boring looking at that. It's just amazing. Five meters, 16 foot four, or 197 inches is the length of the RS7. And indeed, it's just a little bit longer than the base A7 because of the bigger spoiler overhangs. And you can also see the wider wheel arches here, both in the front and the rear for the RS7. So they've really done a lot to change it actually from the base A7. It comes standard with an adaptive air suspension, which sits 10 millimeters lower and also at higher speeds, it automatically goes lower. Or if you go for the extended sports mode, also goes a little bit lower starts with 21 inch wheels these are the optional 22 inch wheels yeah let's find out more about the comfort later on and then optional also carbon ceramic brakes you can see them right here too this is really expensive but wow how cool is this look and also the bright wheels then the bright contrast ring mirrors and also the lower spoiler here i think this very well works together with the frames especially to this dark blue color you can again also go for the night package which then or dark package which goes then here with the black mirrors and so on but i think especially to this color this brighter contrast works even better then this falling roof line classic for the a7 with strong shoulders this was making this car so beautiful really amazing and also interesting technology wise the rear axis steering is also available here for the rs models and it goes five degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels here the rear wheels at slower speeds and more than 60 kilometers an hour then it changes here and the rear wheels go in the parallel direction up to two degrees for higher stability or better stability at higher speeds very interesting but again what a beautiful design object and this three quarter rear view is again one of the most beautiful perspectives on this vehicle again wow and you can see here the light strip that goes all around the vehicle there's also again a very nice design element together with the modern led signature then the rs7 badge and in the lower part a swinging form here again in the contrasting color and real exhaust tips here this is the optional sports exhaust you see it because it has a black frame around the normal sports exhaust would be brighter 
Yeah, the sound, you know, especially in Europe, not too loud anymore because of the particle filters. In the US it will be a little bit louder. But this car is also, you know, it doesn't want to show off too much. It's supposed to be yet again sporty but elegant. And by the way, option you can also go for the so called DRC suspension, dynamic ride control. This would depict the air suspension and then you can have three different suspension settings. So it's basically a fixed suspension, not adaptive, but then adjustable in three different stiffness modes. Not sure if this is really useful. The air suspension, of course, will still ensure more comfort, but still will be very adaptive and sporty at the same time. So that's it, 4 liter V8 bi-turbo, 600 horsepower, mild hybrid technology actually, and 8-speed converter automatic gearbox, rear wheel biased all-wheel drive, 3.6 seconds to 1 km or 62 miles an hour, and 12 seconds to 200 km or 125 miles an hour. Normal A7 would come with 3 liter 6 cylinder petrols and diesels. For the doors we either have here the option with soft close, ah, magic, and we of course also have to test the door closing sound, which is still very solid, although it's frameless, still a solid door closing sound, that is very rare. Inside of the doors is a very great build quality everywhere, galvanized all the levers and also the window levers here with nice clicking sounds as well. So, well, well done. This insert here in this mesh structure, you can get it in a bright or darker style, both possible. RS7 entry batch, aluminum pedals, then the RS steering wheel, flat bottom, perforated structure. Then, you know, the inserts once again right here. Then it standardly comes with the sport seats with integrated head restraint. In Europe, there would be Alcantara on the inside, which would also be better because it keeps you cool in summer and warm in winter. Here, then, with this quilted structure from the animal skin, which gets a little bit uncomfortable on longer runs. So, if you're in the US and you have the standard setup as it is right here now, Ask your dealer if you can also get the Alcantara seats. I mean, they, they leave the plant anyway like that. Why shouldn't you get it also in the US? I don't understand it. Hmm. And then optionally, you can also, so to say, downgrade to a comfort seat, but that also only available in animal skin. So Audi has to offer more cruelty-free materials also in their higher segments, definitely. That's the only thing. Other than that, a great build quality and a very sporty atmosphere here already. Now let's get inside, eat the entry still, but you have a nice seating position here, which has a good compromise between sportiness and comfort. When you turn on the ignition here, the steam wheel really comes down to you again, and when I close the door, also the seat would come a little bit forward. So in the lowest position here with 1.86 or 6.1, still some headroom left. There's no panoramic roof in this vehicle here, but you can also opt for one if you like that. Steering wheel can also be adjusted here electronically up and down, in and out. We have very nice shifting pedals here, special for the RS models, exclusive hole in here, pretty cool. And for these sports seats with integrated head restraint, they're still decently comfortable. Again, if you have the standard Alcantara setup in your market, stick with it because it gives you a little bit more comfort, um, both in sporty and normal driving conditions. Then you can put this lower part a little bit longer, also manual. Everything else is then here in the electric style front and also the back part of the seat. So, yeah, and already a very amazing cockpit, soon more to that. 12.3, 10.1, 8.6 inch, this is the three screen layout. It might seem complicated at first, but for an all digital solution, I really have to say it is very well to control. Soon going to show you that. 
cockpit here with a very horizontal stress that's beautifully done very clean layout this middle console from vehicle to vehicle it can squeeze sometimes when their temperature changes however in this very vehicle the rs7 i didn't hear it yet i had it a couple of times in the rs6 recently I'm not sure what's, you know, um, so yeah, but that again happens when their temperature changes and it's the only flaw I could find, everything else, you know, really very well done. And it also looks cool, Quattro logo here is illuminated at night, the ambient lighting is really also very nice at night here, got also some night shots for you, that looks really very, very cool. These screens will play together. I'll also sh soon show you more to that. In the lower part, we have a start-stop engine button. We have a manual volume control knob. Like to have that still. Then here you can close these cup holders here. Then it's also nicely integrated here. Other than that, they are also adaptive. Automatic shifting lever for the converter automatic gearbox and under the armrest you can put it up and then you have two USB A chargers and some more space. This armrest, by the way, you can also put it out and also adjust it in the height a little bit, so that's possible. And then here the steering wheel again, great compact um, form. All the single frame grill mirrored here on the steering wheel. RS mode button, that's exclusive to this vehicle. You can preset them in the menu. And then volume control on the right. On the left side, you control the digital instruments with the view change. And again, zoom more details to that. And there's also a beautiful frameless mirror that fits very well into this vehicle. And here we go with the screen details. Apple CarPlay integration looks like this. And the 19 speaker B&O sound system is amazing. One of the best on this market. Wow. I have put all the surround sounds. Wow. <laughs> yeah, way to go. Great song, by the way. Um, I can just show it to you here in the, you hop back to the Audi main menu. Then you have a great view overview here. So everything is kept rather simple. Settings, sound, then you're already there. And then for example here, the surround level to maximum 3D sound high. So that's actually straightforward. You can also individualize this menu on the left. So for example, if you want the CarPlay here, then you um, put it right here, for example, then you have a direct CarPlay, CarPlay hotkey right here on the left. So oh, done, now hopping to CarPlay. GPS. So I think a great and a straightforward solution here Audi found there, although it's an all digital. Here, car, Audi drive select, the car goes down either on demand when I click this one here, also although when the car is driving faster and also in dynamic mode, for example, as was mentioned, is going down or when I pick the RS modes, there's an RS gauge monitor here for some temperature overview, for example, maximum G meters and light and vision is interesting to set the background lighting here maritime thomas blue and all the way bright so good you know to discover this a little bit and in the drive select by the way you can also then switch these rs modes rs1 for example you can set drive system suspension steering engine sound how you want to like it and for example it could be that in the rs one mode you have it more balanced and then in the rs2 mode for example you set all the way sporty so this would probably make most sense in this case then these screens also play together first of all temperature control like this here sliding in the lower part or clicking is also possible yes volume knobs are more practical while driving but for a screen solution it's still easy to control also here two zone AC and um, I am nowadays use the swiping gesture also often to sync it again when you do it like this like here this gesture then you sync one and two once more seat heating seat cooling is also available here in the lower part the drive select here this is really hard to pick it while driving so either you leave the drive select open like this or then in this case here with the RS you can also use the RS mode at the steering wheel so that's cool and when you have the GPS here great satellite view you can also deactivate this satellite view to have a more simple view but you see the CPU is really fast and when you enter an address right here you can for example write it in the lower part like this here Berlin then it automatically wow. recognizes this like this or you can also use the normal keyboard and then do things like that so and last but not least the voice control set temperature to 21 degrees 
There we go. So that's good. And drive me to Frankfurt. I'm looking for destinations for you. Please wait a moment. So I think voice control also nicely done. And the rear view camera here with a great resolution. Here the drone view from above and when you put it to the front gear then you have the front camera also with a crossing traffic alert and this 3D view is also possible here. It doesn't reflect the color we have here at the moment sadly uh, but still it looks very fancy. Maybe it would have been too much detail work. This is when you know, like, want to control like a certain area, so you, for example, don't damage these precious wheels. Virtual cockpit. And by the way, here the check engine light. This only appears when the ignition is on, but the engine is not started. It will disappear when the engine starts. That's always with every Audi, Seat, VW, and so on. This here is special performance gauge you can see, and pretty nice. You can however switch back to a normal gauge or no more normal looking gauge like this with the two yeah <laughs> so to speak analog dials so this is also possible and then you can also switch the view like this and also for example put the gps map on the inside and put it all the way through this is so cool one of the best virtual cockpits on the market and let's go back to the performance gauge again it's because in performance gauge it just looks like this or then like this Oh, and yeah, let's go to the RS2 mode, and by the way, I need to show you how the RPMs turn up here, right? Brum, brum, brum. <laughs> and a good option is always the head-up display here with the current speed, the allowed speed. <laughs> yeah, five kilometers now. And also some assistance system info, or when you have set a GPS route, also with some GPS arrows. Rear seating, also here with the leather red cover on the inside of the door, soft and plush. Then still a lot of headroom left. You know, these segment vehicles, they do have enough room in the rear, although you're not using it package-wise. So exterior to interior relation is not that good, but still definitely more than enough room. And also headroom-wise in the A7 here, it does exactly work for me. Of course, you would have a little bit more room than with the Avant, with the RS6 Avant, with the Estate, but still, Considering it's such a design vehicle on the exterior, you can very well use it also in the interior here in the rear. Then you also have isofix at the outside seats here. You do fold the seats from here already or then also the middle part here with the cup holders, adaptive or then used as a ski hatch. And there's a massive middle tunnel here for this all-wheel drive car. Um, this makes it a little bit complicated to maneuver here in the rear. Sitting on the middle seat is hardly possible, not too good. And then there's an extensive climate console for the rear, two USB A chargers, and also climate controls. Of course, that's not all included even in their most expensive cars. Now to the trunk area. You can see this fast back opening. This is so cool because you can easily access everything and a good compromise between a classic sedan and an estate. That's one of the great things about this vehicle. Put in the sample luggage right here. You can see it also easily fits in a vertical way. Maybe not like here, you know. So you have to push it a little bit in and then you're fine. You're just limited right here in this, you know, in this lowest area. You can also remove this one. And here, this is a sunshade. You can leave it like this. When you then close the hatch, it, um, you know, it actually stays upright. Look at that. So it directly fits. And then you have this sunshade. And at any point, you can also just then manual put it down. I like to have a clear view, but when it's really, really hot, it might make a difference. So, 1,400 liters is the maximum capacity when you fold all the seats. Normal trunk length, 1 meters and 15. Then I already folded one of the half there and that one third, two thirds split. Or the middle part, just the ski hatch, also possible. The total length here is about 2 meters. So that's also cool. And the height here below the cover, this is about, yeah, about 45 centimeters. But again, this is the only limitation if you compare it to an estate. And here again you can see the hatch, how it opens completely like this. 
So again, pretty cool. You can also push it a little bit further. I have just limited it to the height of the basement garage um, so it doesn't hit the ceiling there. So that's also a thing you can do just with holding the closing button for a couple of seconds. Then you hear a sound and it's actually fixed. But this one would be the maximum opening. And child safety. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, that was a little bit tough on me. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge with the Audi RS7 and we're going here to the RS modes with a directly help to RS2 which is set on the you know hardest <laughs> yeah um, most performant mode with dry road that's the only thing you would do that not please don't use it at wet roads and we do like a flying start safety first from about 40 kilometers an hour as shifting mode, everything is activated. Let's go. Two twenty kilometers an hour. Wow. Whee. So that was that was something. Lane change here, high speeds at two hundred kilometers an hour. Let's go back again. Wow. So flawless, so smooth, amazing. And this all-wheel drive is putting that power on the ground also so evenly. So what a harsh acceleration on the one hand, but how smooth on the other hand. I'm already feeling like being on Nürburgring Notch Live here. And I mean, driving 200 kilometers now with this car feels like nothing. Now, hard on the brakes from 200 to 100. It wasn't even so hard on the brakes, but so precise, so good in the control. Then at any time you can release this RS mode directly on the steering wheel. Don't have to do anything in the menu. Going a little bit calmer, setting the cruise control, setting the driver assist. And phew, yeah, let's relax here on the motorway, no problem. Sound-wise, I mean, there was a nice, decent sound, but you already heard that this car is not exaggerating things. It's not to be out like this poser vehicle. It's still supposed to be an elegant sports car. So you've seen that on the exterior design and that's also the case then here for everything else. RS2 mode again because we are in the tunnel. Here we can also see more of that ambient lighting while driving here, 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 here. Also a beautiful job. And this is the point to turn down the window. Shifting down with the pedals here. Uh, couldn't hear too much actually, so I think you also on the camera might rather heard wind noise than the sound. Of course, you hear a little bit more sound when you're driving a little bit slower. But yet again, you know, especially here in Europe where we have the particle filters for the petrol engines, the sound has been reduced. Although this is the optional sports exhaust already. You know, standard sports exhaust and then the optional sports sports exhaust. Yeah, but in the US the sound will be a little bit louder still. Um, however, you know, you always have to think about it's nice to have a great low frequency sonorous sound. But I think it's more important that it sounds good, that it sounds low frequency, than being, let's say, loud, you know, on a... Um, you know, on a dB scale. So, to me, I think it's fine when it's not too loud but just when it sounds good, you know, and then I think it's also, you know, you know better just for, you know, every, everyone around you, so you could enjoy then a, a nice sound, but don't annoy too many people at the same time, because when you're driving to self, you always think that, wow, that's amazing, cool, 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 but when you're sitting in your garden and want to sleep, and someone's uh, driving past in the F-Type SVR, you think like, the hell? <laughs> so... Here the, there's the blind monitor off, flashing also when we hit the turning indicator. Such an agile performance car. Rear axis steering makes it also, wow, this, you really feel the rear axis steering when you're easing it around here. And this is really a car that gives you nice and decent comfort as long as the road is well done. Um, also on longer motorway rides, then more stiffness to be able to drive a little bit faster. And it, yet, you know, you can, always have the real punch no matter in which driving mode you are actually so wow
adrenaline <laughs> was pumping up. Now calming down again. But we do one more big acceleration for you here, definitely. I always like how they put the steering. You have such a good feeling. So when you're easing the car around, you don't have to use a lot of power. Yet again, it gives you enough resistance that it doesn't feel unnatural. So this is a very progressive setup that you don't have to steer that much. See here, usually you are steering the angle of the angle of the, co of the, of the curve. And that's really very well done. So I think what Audi has done here, and also with their normal versions, not only necessarily with their sport versions, they have one of the best steering setups where they really have a very progressive one. You can keep your hands at the steering wheel all the time. Don't have to grab around most of the time. It's feeling very direct and sporty, yet it's comfortable and it still feels natural. They directly hit the spot for that, you know? For example, with Mercedes, you have to steer more. It still feels very natural, but not too progressive. BMW, they also have some good steering feeling in most of the vehicles, not in all of them. Sadly, a 3 Series has one of the weirdest steering feelings, whereas this one should have the best one. Yeah, I don't know. And then we also have some other brands which more like it, like Jaguar or Alpha. Um, they're very sporty steerings, very direct and precise, but that doesn't give you the most natural feeling. Yeah, so it really depends on. Now we are already at a little higher speed. Let's go back to the RS mode again. And so we are at about 80 kilometers an hour. And then there's the famous sign here on the German motorways where it says, you can throw it out, babe. <laughs> and let's go to 80, let me know. Let's go. And that's 200. And now we are in this corner here at 200 kilometers an hour. And look at that, how stable the car is on the road. It's really like being on one of the straights on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. And this, you know, the air suspension is stiffening a little bit up at higher speeds. It's also lowering itself. I also see it here. I'm in a lower position with the air suspension. Automatically done in the RS mode both. And also when you're driving a little bit faster. Let's check the speed here now. No one's turning up. Wow. I mean, this feels like also noise sensation. Right? How silent it is here still. This feels like driving a normal vehicle at about 100 kilometers an hour. Just that we're going double the speed. So 125 miles an hour. Now on the brakes here again, great braking performance, reducing the speed. And once again, going on a normal motorway cruise again. So this car can really do both. And I really like this with the Audi RS vehicles, whereas AMG, the true AMG models, and also the true M models are really very, very stiff. And you lose more comfort. Audi still tries to give you a little bit more balance between sportiness and comfort. So, I mean, the AMG vehicles are amazing, the BMW M vehicles as well, yes. But to me, like the sportiest vehicles, I would meanwhile actually prefer the Audis because you have a little bit more comfort, although you have the top sportiest version. That's of course a matter of philosophy. Some others say like, you know, that's not the real sporty deal. Only the BMW M or only the AMG 63 models are the real deal because they are so, you know, stiff and sporty without compromise. I think it's just a matter of preference. The only thing we can do here is prevent these differences to you, actually. So, by the way, if you wonder um, the difference in here, flooring it out, the normal, here long-term memory, where we had more motorway and stuff, um, 11 liters to more kilometers, that was this, you know, like this 20 MEG plus. And then when we floor it really out, 15 liters to more kilometers here on the short trip, that would be then less than 20 MEG, definitely way less than 20 MEG. So that's then the difference, of course, but still for this performance, still quite okay, somewhat. They also have, you know, some, some pure um, reduction technologies in here. It's of course not the main focus of this vehicle. Yeah, still have to, you know, keep that in mind. You can, however, you know, if you like fancy this RS version, like, wow, so cool, but then don't want to spend so much money, it's always just fine. Pick a normal A7 
go with the 3 liter TFSI, the 3 liter six cylinder petrol engine. It's just a fine engine actually. And then you can also have a lot of fun with that, no problem. Whew. No silence. That was a wild ride, wasn't it? Oh, I feel that the air suspension is raising again. We are at the lower speeds. We can also see we're at level three, basically. We can also pump it up a little bit more. Yo, pump it up, yo. When we go, like, you know, have some bumpy road uh, or something, and we want to protect the, the spoilers, so that's also possible. So definitely the best to stick with the air suspension then. Then you're most flexible, and I told you earlier, that's also standard for this vehicle. So that's about performance, driving fast and so on. Once again, so great to slalom this car around. This is so amazing. Together, especially with the rear axle steering, which we have here, this feels like a compact vehicle, you know? Um, yeah, just amazing what they've done here, driving performance-wise. Wow, what a dream vehicle. And we have something more for you, because you might also want to move this car in a more normal environment. City driving, some more, you know, assistance system features, and definitely more to talk about also in a calmer way. Let's jump to that. And now to some city driving, everyday driving life situations. And even if you're just in normal driving mode, yeah, that's a lot of fun and you always have that boost also in the normal driving mode, definitely. So, also again, when you're driving in the city, it's so silent as for the noise insulation, that's really, really cool. As for the riding comfort, yes, I mentioned earlier, we do have the air suspension here, and that's definitely cool. And you should not go for that optional stiffer DRC suspension, because you just lose some comfort and this one here is definitely sporty enough. Again, we have the 22 inch wheels mounted like we had with the RS6 Avant. And this is also reducing comfort in your everyday driving life. So if you go for the RS7, RS6 and so on, then definitely stick with the base wheels, the 21 inch wheels. They are <laughs> actually even too big, not visually, they look cool. And yes, 22 inch looks even cooler, but the best, you know, Still great looks and still good comfort combination would be 20 inch, I think, for this vehicle. But that's not available, at least from standard works. Maybe you go for 20 inch with winter tires. Oh, wait a minute. And the brake disc could be too big for that. Yeah, depending on. So, um, yeah, that's, um, that's the catch. Uh, here again with the optional brakes. And, you know, they are a little bit over-engineered for everyday driving life, definitely. At least they keep the wheels clean. <laughs> so when you're driving in the city, you can use it as an everyday driver, no problem. Again, the big wheels, this is the only limiting factor for the, you know, that diminishes the comfort a little bit in everyday driving life. Everything else, you can still live with that. You know, at least you know, getting reminded, Thomas, this is the RS. Hello, I'm still the RS. <laughs> yeah, that's what this setup is doing then. And you can just leave it in the auto mode or then in, in, in the comfort mode that you still have enough you know, evening out comfort from the air suspension. Also, when you're just cruising here, it's so cool to handle this vehicle. I think it's also a better decision here by Audi to leave it with the rear axle, at least you know, give the option for rear axle steering here with the RS models, whereas BMW with the M model set, that's not our philosophy, we don't need that. And I think it's real way better here, you know, when you're easing it around in the basement garage or in narrower streets and so on, the rear axle steering is so helpful. At these lower speeds, it makes the car appear as it would have a shorter wheelbase. That's really a very, very cool feature. So I really love to have that. And then again, this optional dynamic package where everything is included, also with the rear differential lock and so on yeah so expensive so i have to think about if you rather go for you know single options then then getting this super super expensive dynamic package where everything is included it also depends from market to market market what they include and what not here once again by the way i do prefer to have the bright mirrors and not the black package 
or carbon package or something because then you always can look at the contrasting mirrors here you know out of the window and yeah to me that's that's a lot of fun uh, and I told you earlier I really really love that especially in combination with the Navarra blue color so uh, yeah these traffic announcements hate those um, I mean at some point they can, they can be helpful um, when you directly hit the options button there then you can actually also um, turn them off so at least um, that's quite easily done how you can turn them off so sometimes in, in vehicles you search for hours and hours and hours how to be able to turn it off and then you, you, know, you don't really find it other than that controlling here the temperature while driving I think for a screen solution this is one of the best ones yes a lot of us guys oh that's an old beetle a nice Miami blue color so knobs are some more better to control while driving then again you can use the voice command um, or you can then you know click it here or swipe and at some point this is also you know more or less possible blindly I'm not looking down at the moment still controlling the temperature so again for a screen solution this can still be controlled while driving and everything else also when you want to check out the fuel economy you want to change something in the screen here um, change the view change the map view and so on to me from all these new big luxury cars the big Audis have one of the most intuitive inputs here and the easiest uh, software menu structure and so on as for fuel economy you can you know when you go some cruise control motorway or don't exceed it here with the fun here by the way again look at that I don't have to turn on in the steering wheel too much progressive steering I love that so you can score some 11 liters on one kilometer so that's definitely 20 mpg plus of course a little bit more 20 mpg plus in the UK mpg figures US mpg would 20 mpg would be pretty exact and for such a performance vehicle that's still somewhat okay I think remember we have 600 horsepower under the hood and of course it goes higher than when you really floor it out as we did earlier but definitely also when you're driving this car in a slow way such a fun vehicle and so sovereign on the road it gives you so much yeah satisfaction definitely and the cool thing again about the 7 here a7 rs7 the driving feeling is not too different from the rs6 Avant, by the way but somehow yeah you feel a little bit cooler i have to admit you know it's just a more beautiful car to me at least some might even prefer the estate visually but and again this compromise you know you have such a cool car and then you definitely here in this, this contrasting setup here and the you know more elegant form i see the looks from from the people and i mean so many people are looking after this vehicle and you still have practicability because of this fastback opening and that's of course pretty cool by the way you don't have to change the driving mode if you want to, to boost it a little bit you can also pull the shifting lever here the automatic shifting lever backwards then you're already in the s shifting mode and then <laughs> heard that it was like a little, little traction loss because we had so much power um, we often say that the, in germany the tires are they, they, they stempel, so they're like they're stamping, you know, stempel, stamping uh, on the ground. That's you know when you leave some rubber there. However, here due to the all-wheel drive, real biased, you don't leave too much rubber on the ground because everything is distributed quite evenly. Let's go back to normal, <laughs> normal driving mode and set the cruise control right here. So that's cool. Adaptive cruise control flawless reaction and keeping the distance to the cars in front of us it's always now a cool um setting here when we're going like sideways here yay <laughs> so and then um there is this elaborated lane keeping assist feature driver assist um you can activate here with your um you know left indicator finger right there not sure if you can see it on, on screen there and then you can activate this additionally and here Wow, amazing. This is here again, construction side. I'm just having hands on steering wheel, how it's supposed to be for safety reasons, but I'm not steering myself at the moment, just having them very loosely fit. This is so amazing. I mean, in the construction side lane, very close here, and 
look at that, not nervous at all. Super smooth, keeping us in the lane. So the work they done here on the assistance systems is phenomenal. Also, <laughs> that's so funny again. Here's 80 kilometers an hour. But on the right side, there's a 60 sign, or there has been a 60 sign that was recognized. Then the car was setting the speed to 60. So I have to say, well done from the car, even though in this case it's not 100% right because here on the left lane we still are at 80. But that's the traffic sign recognition and also this predictive assistant. If you pick the max assistant system, predictive assistant actually then rules the speed in front of roundabouts, next intersection, and so on. The speed is being reduced before you actually realize that, so that also saves some fuel and gives you a little smoother ride. The blind spot monitor is integrated here in the side mirrors. Not sure if you've seen that here at some point already. Um, but with this car, hard to indicate intentionally because hardly anyone will ever overtake you. Of course, at least, uh, uh, unless they're really speeding and you're not. And you know, even at higher speeds here, one kilometer, 60 miles an hour, this car is so agile and so flawless. And by the way, so easy to deactivate this lane keeping assist here just with uh, one pressing of the finger. Because at some point when you say like, ah, oh, you know, I really want to take over control myself, then you can always do that at any time. And I think, uh, again, such a great solution here. So I've been driving from all brands, the big cars lately, like for a lot of kilometers and I think the you know the, the user input they have here is pretty simple. Also, yeah, BMW as well. You know, with the you know five series, also the big SUVs X5, X7. And the Mercedes have become a little bit more complicated, especially you know with the um, digital instruments and so on uh, to control things there. So I think the BMWs and the Audi are a little bit easier in this case there at the moment. So and when you're hard on the brakes, yeah such a fine feeling although we know with ceramic brakes you always have to hammer them a little bit more than with the usual ones and now to our conclusion for today with the new audi rs7 in this new generation here of course a big interior update with all these touchscreens but for touchscreen solution I think it's very well usable because the menu structure is very easy to learn and also the temperature control you get used to it indeed and for a non-knob temperature use it's one of the best inputs they have there. The only thing on the interior that is missing is more non-animal skin seating and they are able to offer that to you actually you know at this modern times without any change you can get the same look you can get the same feel just cruelty free that is possible we just have to get there also in the higher trim cars and Audi. Exterior wise, such a beautiful and elegant vehicle and really, I think it's really cool that it's so sporty but yet remains, you know, with this very elegant form. I would also pick it the way it is here with the bright chrome accentuations but at any time you can also pick the dark package if you want a more sinister look. To me, I think it's probably the most beautiful Audi there is at the moment. And it's of course cool this body form combines so many things this elegance in the styling but yet you have the fast big opening and can you can very well use it for loading things in and out driving the only thing there is 22 inch wheels does reduce the comfort when the road is not so well done i would really love this car with 20 inch wheels that would probably be the best setup but then you can at least stick with the base 21 inch wheels this will be a little bit better than here with 22 inch wheels everything you know else it delivers a better compromise than the bmw, BMW m and the aim true amg models so the audi rs models always a little bit more comfortable more compromise between sportiness and comfort yet it is so performant such a great acceleration feels like nothing when you're driving high speeds and it's so silent on the interior. What a flawless driving feeling, especially and also when you have the rear axle steering. What a dream vehicle. And yeah, the only thing then, at least uh, 120,000 euros or dollars. And when you have it like this here with so more options and so on, more than 160,000. And that's of course very tough to swallow. And this maybe brings us then to the conclusion that you better watch this car here in our review and then go for a normal A7 with the 3D six cylinder 
petrol or diesel and can enjoy it. Definitely, yeah, maybe not as sporty, but definitely also very enjoyable and maybe yeah, less than half the price. <laughs> so what's your take on that here? Today with the Audi RS7, give us your feedback in the comments to this vehicle and also see you at one of our other reviews. See you there. Thanks so much for tuning in today.